the vast majority of programs I have installed on my system, I am using Pac-Man, my native package manager, but occasionally there are reasons why I might want to use one of these containerized solutions like an app image, a snap, or a flat pack. And when I have the option to choose one of them, I am almost always going to go with the app image. Now, unlike the other two solutions, app images don't actually have a package manager built around them. So when you want to install one, the way you do it is the same way you'd install something typically over on Windows, where you go to the website and you download it from there. But today we are looking at a third party package manager for the app images known as Zap. But it doesn't have to be like that. Today we're looking at Zap. This is a third party package manager for app images. Now one thing you might not be sure about is where the programs are actually you know, coming from, because unlike with snaps and flat packs where they actually have these dedicated first party repos, and in the case of flat packs, very well made third party repos as well, you might think there's no actual repos for app images. Well, there kind of is, they're more like catalogs of the software because unlike those other two, you don't really need a repo. So one of those is the App Image Hub. It obviously won't have every single piece of software, but most of the things that I know about that have app images absolutely are in here. The other one is this one right here. So the way that Zap works is by pulling from these two services and I believe you can actually add extra ones in as well. Now, Zap is a CLI tool, and while you could obviously go to these websites to find the app images, you probably want some way to search for them within the application itself. Luckily, we can go and do that. So if we go and run Zap and then search, this is going to basically bring up every single package or every single app image. I don't know really how to refer to them inside of FCF. So FCF is going to be one of the dependencies of the application. And there is actually a lot of app images in here. I didn't realize there were so many. So let's say we wanted to go and install something like Firefox, for example. So there are a couple of versions of Firefox. Let's say we want to go and download the uh, just the regular version. Doing this isn't actually going to install it for us. It is going to tell us the command to actually do so, though. Do keep in mind that a lot of the app images available are not going to be first party app images and are just going to be packaged by some third party who likes the application. This is due to the fact that a lot of developers just do not release their applications as an app image. There are some exceptions, for example, like with Olive, but most of them are going to be third party like we see here. So do be careful with what you are installing, but this is basically as safe as installing something from the AUR. There are going to be some things that, you know, might be bad, but make sure you're actually looking into things that you might not be sure about. Anyway, now that that is out of the way, let's go and install Firefox. Now, one thing to keep in mind is because these aren't, you know, like really well-managed repos, some of the results in here aren't actually going to work. Also, because these are third-party repos, they're not going to be as up-to-date as you otherwise might like to see. So Firefox, for example, is at Firefox version 93, and it seems like whoever was packaging this hasn't gotten it up to the latest version now. The other problem is that some of the results in here aren't actually going to work and probably shouldn't be showing up as results. So these, for example, the ones without version numbers, aren't actually going to function. If you find one that has a version number attached to it, that one you actually can go and install. Also, the sorting might be a little bit weird sometimes. So for example, version 91 is showing before these versions. It's just a little bit weird based on the, uh, based on the third party repos that we're going with. Anyway, let's go and install this one right here. Say yes, it's going to tell us how big it actually is, and it'll take a bit of time to actually install. It shouldn't take that long, it's only 100 meg, so I'll cut back to when it's done. One really nice thing this does is it actually goes and renames the app image so you're not writing out that entire version string every time you want to run it. The other thing that it does is it goes and sets up your sim links to your path properly. So if I just go and type in Firefox into my terminal, it actually goes and runs the program that we just installed. Obviously, if you have a different version of the program installed with your native package manager, I believe this one is going to take precedence because this one is more local to the user. Anyway, though, this is what we wanted to see. Now, you don't just have to install from those, I guess, catalogs that are connected directly to the application. Instead, what we can do is we can actually install something directly from GitHub. So the way we do this is doing zap install and then passing in the dash dash GitHub option. 
dash dash from and then passing in the git slug. So let's say I wanted to do something like VS Codium. So that is VS Codium slash VS Codium. Basically, it is the owner of the repo slash the name of the repo, that thing you see at the top of every single repo on GitHub. And then going and running this, this is going to give us basically the same option we saw before. But unlike when we're taking it from those catalogs, typically the uh, versions stored over on GitHub are going to be a little bit more up to date because sometimes the catalogs don't get updated properly, even though the developer of that app image actually is, you know, packaging it properly. So let's go and install the latest version. Yep, let's proceed with it. And give it a second, it's going to go and download that, and I'll cut back to when it's done. And then, like before, if we go and run VS Codium, this should go and launch out the application. Except, I don't know if this is a problem with this app image or a problem with my system, but it's not actually working. So what this allows us to do is talk about one of the places where Zap could really improve, and that is with downgrading. So, when it comes to downgrading, you might think you could just go and run Zap and reinstall the program. It complains instead that it's already installed, and that's entirely fair. But what it should allow you to do is just install a different version from that command, or maybe have like... A, a downgrade command, which from what I can see, doesn't actually exist. Except it kind of does exist, just not where you'd expect it to be. So the way we go and do a downgrade is by using the update command. So update is used for both updating and also, I guess, downgrading. I don't know why it's like that. I'm sure there's a better word you could use rather than update. Maybe like, I don't know, Version? I don't I don't know. There's there's probably something better you can use, or maybe split them out into separate commands. Either way, if we go and run this now, it is going to remove the program before you select a new version. So if you go and cancel it here, you'll actually be left without the program being installed. It probably shouldn't uninstall it until you actually select a new version. If you do cancel here, you have to go and just reinstall it if you want that different version instead. Anyway, let's go and download the latest version again, that one that I couldn't get working. Give that a second, and it'll be done. Right now, I think we're running the latest version of all the app images I have installed. But if I wanted to go and upgrade all of them anyway, this can be done by doing zap upgrade. And that is going to go and prompt us to do the exact same thing, but on all of the programs instead of just on one of them. So let's go and select this one again. Proceed, yes. It's going to go and install that one. Then it's going to go to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. This is kind of an annoying way to do it. I would like to see it try to automatically detect what the latest version is, especially when all of these do have version numbers attached to them. And for the most part, the version numbers do allow it to actually be sorted properly. By running zap... Daemon. This is going to let a update checker daemon run in the background. It's not actually going to go and update anything for you, but it will let you know that updates are available. I don't really care too much about this. I don't have that many app images installed, and it makes more sense to just go and check it when I want to go and update it. So for me, that's not really that useful. Something that is useful, though, is zap list. Just in case I forget what I actually have installed, here is a list of everything I have. One thing I would like to see on this is the version number I actually have installed, so I can actually go and, you know, check online what version is the latest version and update it like that if I want to. Now, since you probably have most of your app images, you know, just stored as an app image outside of the package manager, one thing this does allow you to do is actually let Zap go and manage those. So I went and downloaded the Olive, so I went and downloaded the Olive app image before, and if we go and do Zap install, and then the name of the thing we want to install. So let's say we're calling it Olive, and then we pass in the path to it. So that is just going to be this one right here. It's going to say, okay, I don't know what this is. Uh, yeah, okay, we can install that. And now it's actually being managed by Olive. If we go and run a zap list, now that's actually in that list. And we should be able to go and run it like this. And that will launch up that app image. Now, obviously, you can't do updates like this. But it does allow you to remove it and other little things like that. Now, I'm sure most of you guys aren't just going to accept, oh, it just magically stores them somewhere. So everything being installed by Zap is going to be stored in .local slash share slash Zap slash v2. I guess v2 because it's the second version of Zap. I'm not sure what would be in v1. 
So inside of this folder, we are going to find the app images we're actually installing with the original names, except for this one where we installed it, um, you know, from something locally on our system. And then the way that it actually goes and determines what it should actually call it for when you actually try to run it is actually stored inside of this index folder. So inside of here, we have some JSON files that keep track of things like the file path, what the executor was called, where the icon for it can be found, and other little things to just make managing the application actually possible. Then from there, it's actually going to go and create a sim link in another directory. This is going to be the .local directory slash bin. And inside of here, you'll notice things like Firefox. And we have Olive. Basically, this is the local place to install applications, much like the slash USR slash bin, but this is just for the local user. It's certainly a very basic way to handle it, but it absolutely does the job. And when it comes to Zap's feature set, it's also fairly basic as well. But when you're working with repos that are like third-party repos that are only like half complete, you only really have so much to actually work with. I would like to see, you know, a more dedicated response to make sure all app images are actually stored in one location, or at least, you know, all of the places that distribute them is linked to from that location, so everyone who wants to install an app image knows where they can find it. These are certainly getting their way to being better, but they're still, you know, a little bit janky as you can see. Now, if you would like to install Zap, it's actually kind of funny. So, there are two main ways to install it. Obviously, you could compile the application, but besides that, you could go and use this automated installation where you run this curl command and pipe it into bash, but please, developers, stop doing this. This is incredibly dangerous. No one should be trying to install stuff like this. The better option, though, is going and downloading the binary from the GitHub and then just going and running it like that. That's the way that I've installed it, and it works perfectly fine. One thing that is missing, though, is there's not actually an app image. You might say, oh, why would you have an app image for the app image package manager? Well, why would you have an AUR package manager on the AUR? It's basically the same thing. It would be nice to have if, you know, you really care about app images. The only thing I didn't talk about is configuration, and the only reason why I didn't do so is because there's not really much to configure. You can configure where stuff comes from, you can configure where it's stored, and that's pretty much it. That, that's basically all there is to do. This is stored in the .config slash zap slash config.ini. And by default, it's not actually going to be generated. To generate that, the way you do that is by running zap init, going through the, uh, the setup process, and then it will just generate this file for you. I do think the idea of an app image package manager is certainly an interesting one, even though unlike snaps and flat packs where the package manager sets up the environment to actually run them, it's not actually required with the app images. The one thing I would like to see worked on, I know this is outside of the control of the package manager, is I would like to see a lot of work being done on the repos themselves. I don't know how you'd get developers, you know, actually putting their stuff in there. Maybe it would just take these third-party repos actually just getting popular and letting people know that these actually do exist. That's going to be it for me, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribe store on the Vero Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Drops and Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.